welcome from me. Yeah, we want to talk about vehicle development challenges and how we can address them with powerful and flexible uh, XIL systems. And let's start with uh, product development challenges. And before I go to tell you how, where we see the challenges, I want to share with you uh, some poll we did uh, earlier this year. We basically asked a participant in the webinar what product development challenges they see in their uh, daily work. We gave them the option, are these the new architectures uh, which are now coming with a transition to uh, e-mobility? Is it that you're being asked to uh, implement more an agile development process? Or is it the increase in complexity you're facing? Or are these the good old challenges which we had for, yeah, <laughs> since we're developing cars, so that you have to reduce costs and uh, you have to reduce time. And these were the responses we were getting. So uh, new architectures, agile development increase, complexity, all of them are important, but still the most important things are you need to be faster and you need to do this uh, at uh, reduced costs. And that's where we think, and I guess you're also thinking this, that's the reason why you are attending this webinar, so that X in the loop can help us to reduce time and cost. So X in the loop, I think just, just that we have the same understanding can be early in the phase. It's a model in the loop. You develop controls. You put the control software in the loop, then we're talking about software in the loop. Then once you include physical entities in your simulation, then we're talking drive, uh, hardware in the loop. You can put a human in the simulation loop. Then we're talking about driver in the loop. And then uh, last but not least, we also uh, can have applications where we are talking about vehicle in the loop. And as we said, I think all of this have the promise that we can do more in a shorter amount of time and at less cost. If we're now talking about X in the loop, what are the trends we are seeing when talking to customers like you? I think the one trend, it's clear, it's obvious, I think with the ever increasing applications of advanced driver assistance systems, we have to deal with more complex controls. Second trend we're seeing is the trend towards more detailed models. So maybe uh, when controls development started for vehicle dynamics, for example, then in a lot of cases, people were just using a, a simple bicycle model for uh, their vehicle dynamic studies and controls development. But we are seeing now that people are asking for more, more detail because you also want to do more in the simulation world where you may not just to develop the basic function of your new control system, but you also want to move towards a calibration. And if you want to do this, you need to have more detailed models which cover a higher frequency range and uh, which also let allows you to dive in in specific components of your vegan. And last but not least, we're talking about more disciplines. It's not only about vehicle stability or uh, lane keeping assist, we also want to understand uh, what is the effect, for example, on the noise, vibration, and harshness uh, attributes of your vehicle. In order to address these trends, we want to offer you an integrated virtual test approach, which uh, includes also driving simulators where you can put the human in the loop. The value proposition we are offering is that you can use the same real-time tool stack for different simulation activities. 
from model in the loop, software in the loop, hardware in the loop, up to on vehicle testing. And we want to provide you an environment where you can test more detailed models, you can test more complex controls, and you can test uh, more disciplines. And let's have a look on how the environment looks, uh, which we are proposing from VI Grade. And here, Alessandro uh, will take over in the next slides. Thank you, Michael. Um, so to perform uh, uh, a very important part of the simulation and remaining the real time, hard real time, we need to have a platform. So what we intend as a platform, it's a mix of a hardware, middleware, and software. In this case, uh, we base our technology on the hardware, on coming from uh, our sister company, Concurrent Real Time, where we have hardware for high performance hardware. At the same time, we can equip also the real time computers with uh, different modules uh, like a signal conditioning and fault insertion, all sort of uh, IO cars to manage uh, all uh, IO sensor uh, signals uh, coming from uh, the real world uh, when connecting uh, not only models and software, but also um, physical components such as ECUs uh, and, and the real mechanical components. So we need to manage, for example, CAN protocol, EtherCAT, uh, Lean, FlexRay, um, and also we are adopting more and more programmable with PGA to give our customer the freedom to program uh, its own uh, communication and protocol so with uh, the attached IOs. Um, to do so, not only the hardware is sufficient, but also we need to have uh, a a very precise device instrument that we call it's called simulation workbench. Uh, we, we name as a is a software on a Linux based software, also proprietary of the company, and um, it allows us to distribute the loads of calculation among the different uh, cores of the different CPUs uh, of the real time machine and make sure that uh, we have a deterministic system. Um, so it's not only fast, but also it's deterministic. That is uh, the, the definition of a hard real time. And then we also complete the complete uh, the platform, the real time platform, with uh, our uh, tool chain, software tool chain via Drive Sim to not only have uh, a complete and com uh, complex vehicle dynamic model through um, VI car real time, but also the environment, the the graphic environment thanks to VI World Sim uh, that also allows to have the definition of traffic scenarios, uh, the, the total virtualization of a sensor, such as a camera, LiDAR, and uh, radars, uh, a driver model, and, um, and also the possibility to uh, have a um, co-simulation uh, with uh, external tools, uh, such as uh, uh, Simulink as first, uh, but also different tools coming from uh, the automotive industry, thanks to the um, so, uh, FMU and FMI protocols. And they also the platform allows to direct connection to a device under test when we call talk about the, not only ECUs but also mechanical hardware in the loop uh, when we have to connect the physical components such as uh, e motors, uh, battery, uh, suspension systems, test systems, um, EPS, uh, camera in the loop, uh, and uh, sensors in the loop, uh, and, and others. And also to connect is also the core platform to. Um, to manage uh, simulators from uh, static uh, desktop, uh, static compact to uh, the the more uh, complex uh, uh, dynamic simulators, and finally also have exactly the same tool chain for a real vehicle in vehicle uh, simulation. So three keywords to define the the platform. The real time platform is a plat is a very powerful in terms of architecture because it's based on the multi core and the hard real time technology. is a complete as a solution because we can manage a uh, hardware and software stack for multiple disciplines, as Michael was saying before. And also, it's very most important part is an open environment is a platform, an open platform, an open environment for building up a turnkey solution for customer that can be tailored, made uh, for, for customer needs. A deep, 
a little deep dive to uh, the solution highlights, what is inside an outdoc platform. Here you can see um, a demo picture of a system where we have the real time machine on the bottom, a graphical computer, a programmable DC supply, and also an ECU holder. This is a demo version that uh, we will talk a little bit more with the two use cases in the next slides. Um, the system is based on the commercial off-the-shelf uh, components. Is a, as I mentioned before, is an open architecture thanks to a Linux um, operating system. is based on multi-core technology, and I will show later on which are the our um, our product portfolio. Uh, it's tightly integrated with Simulink because we can generate, uh, uh, we can compile Simulink models directly inside the auto and run a simulation workbench in real time. Can support uh, um, different automotive protocols. The you know the most famous is CanLean and FlexRay or CanFT. It's compatible with the uh, VI certified ecosystem. Uh, we will uh, talk a little bit more detail uh, in, uh, in the next slides. And uh, it's an open architecture thanks to uh, configurational files, uh, uh, the, com the possibility to have uh, some uh, specific scripts to launch uh, uh, testing automation uh, and offline uh, test sessions. And also thanks to our multi-year expertise in a hardened loop connection to the driving simulators, we define uh, a well-defined portfolio, product portfolio, broader portfolio to, to serve our customers. To do so, we define uh, um, three different uh, base products. Uh, depending on the number of cores, we define AUTOC 8, 16, and 24 that um, represent the basis for us uh, for starting an XIL system. To, uh, depending on the type of application uh, for office, offline calculation of, or connected to a driving simulator or, or in vehicle, for example, or even to run advanced multi-body systems in real-time models such as Adams or Simpac and others, we define a different uh, uh, product lines. These, uh, the communities, uh, it's, they are based on the same technology. Uh, they differ only in terms of a power, um, computational power, but in terms of a tool stack, it remains exactly the same. What about the software ecosystem? As we talked about, it's an open platform, also in terms of software connectivity, uh, VI grade certified program. It's a very important uh, product because uh, we need to think about, uh, um, for example, a, a puzzle. Uh, and the, the small pieces of the puzzle for, for building up a complete simulation, a vehicle uh, simulation, uh, we need to have, for example, a vehicle model. And uh, we need to manage a different tire models, for example. We need to manage a different environment and scenarios, for example, different maneuvers. We could have a different uh, uh, driver models and uh, sensor models. Same uh, uh, possibility to connect with uh, different controllers, for example, NI, this space vector, or even uh, um, Simulink models. And, uh, uh, sound, graphics, also the environment, uh, the graphic environment is very important. We can match all sort of combination thanks to the uh, drive sim uh, um, uh, platform that is, it allows us to combine uh, different solutions coming from uh, different uh, suppliers. At the same time, we are also able to include uh, our own technology and our own software packages to complete uh, the, the, the solution uh, for, for our customers. Uh, let's talk about uh, uh, concrete examples. We define for our Zero Prototype Summit this year um, two use cases and the two small demos that uh, we will see in a, in a short while in the video, and then I will explain you what to talk about. The first one is about connecting uh, um, an out hoc system, real time system with a vehicle dynamic model to a very compact uh, uh, e motor test bench. Um, of course, is a demo, is a is a scaled version, and the second uh, uh, demo is uh, um, about uh, an hardware in the loop system with a, a, a real ECU uh, running a real software for ESP and having also controllers and the sensors uh, totally virtual.
the first case, um, the first demo is based on a very compact uh, e-motor test bed. Uh, thanks to the partnership with the HBK and Polytechnic of Turin, uh, we were able to build up uh, this system connected to an outlook. Uh, what is on the test bed? On the test bed, we have uh, two e-motors. One acts as a dyno and one uh, acts as a motor under test or unit under test. And, uh, and then this dart through a CAM connection, network connection is connected to the AUTOX system where we have uh, a full vehicle dynamic model and the virtual ECU. We exchange, uh, as I said before, through CAM connection, we uh, inject and uh, results from a vehicle dynamic model and we control uh, by torque and RPM the, uh, the e-motor test bed and the torque delivered measured thanks to a torque meter from HBK, um, we, we send back this value to the vehicle model. Uh, what is the, the setup? We have a real-time test bench uh, for e-motor scale, as uh, indicated in the picture of the top left. We have a virtual ECU for the vehicle uh, for e-motor management, and we have a complete detailed vehicle model. And in terms of a hardware component, uh, uh, as I said before, we have the motor under test, a small e-motor. Of course, everything, all the signals are scaled and uh, they are, we use some multiplier to make sure that we are emulating uh, the real condition of the motor and we can stimulate uh, this e-motor in a real driving condition. The second demo, it's about connecting uh, and uh, for others application uh, and a real ECU of ESP control and having uh, a, all sort of sensors, vehicle sensors, as such as a camera and radar for uh, traffic detection and uh, vehicle detections uh, to implement uh, perception logics. Uh, and of course, always a detailed vehicle model in the loop. In this case, we have uh, three different uh, uh, connection types. We have uh, a CAN bus connection between the AUTOLC and uh, the ECU, the SP ECU, control ECU. We have uh, uh, an embedded uh, uh, vehicle dynamic model for VI car real time uh, inside running on the simulation workbench on the AUTOLC in real time. We have a compiled uh, perception logics and uh, automatic emergency brake control unit uh, models developed in a Simulink uh, compiled in a simulation workbench to run real time. And then we exchange uh, through direct channel the um, to the environment, the graphic environment that is that runs on the Windows machine, or the graphic machine uh, where we run a VI World Sim. What is defined in the VI World Sim? Uh, in VI World Sim, we define the traffic engine, the virtual sensors such as a camera and and radar, and the road network, uh, the 3D environment. And of course, we define specific scenarios. For example, in the demo, we define a, an abrupt cutting of the of the target vehicle in front of us, and we uh, try to manage the the perception logic of the sensors and uh, calibrating the ESP control unit to make sure that the vehicle stops before hitting the vehicle in the front of him. And at the same time, we, we can develop uh, um, what, what are the, the advantages of these systems. When we have a vehicle dynamic model, a full vehicle dynamic model connected to uh, a software in the loop, model in the loop, or hardware in the loop systems, we can in advance front loading early development of logics, um, make sure that we have a more realistic um, interconnection between the subsystems. For example, an e-motor is not just the e-motor, but we need also to control the inverter of the motor, and we need to control the logics to make sure that, for example, in terms of power consumption and efficiency are, are uh, approaching in the right way. And we need to have this vehicle dynamic model that behaves uh, uh, in, in real condition, even though we run fully virtual models. Uh, the possibility to have a vehicle dynamic model integrated in, in an XIL system, we, uh, we can then run complex homologation cycles, urban traffic and emergency maneuvers, as I said before, durability load cases, lap time attack scenarios, and of course, always connected to a driving simulator to have the driver in the loop. Okay.
Thank you, Alessandro. And uh, let's look at some uh, use cases uh, from our customers. So um, I have uh, four use cases. Uh, we want to start with vehicle dynamics. Uh, we want to look at uh, a hill lab with uh, detailed uh, multi-body models. We want to talk about what we recommend you do if you have hill test sets up which are not at the same uh, location. So in other words, how to address uh, latency problems. And the last example I want to share with you is uh, from uh, in, in vehicle, it's an in vehicle application. And uh, let's start with the vehicle dynamics. And uh, this uh, case study is uh, from AMG. And uh, it's around, I'm not sure whether you heard about this, it's around the project one. So uh, this is a project uh, AMG undertook for the, I think it was the 50th year anniversary, where somebody came up with the idea, couldn't we develop a car which is powered by a Formula One engine? And uh, yeah, let's have let's have a look at it, and uh, then we'll dive into some more details. During a test, we got the measurement data where we can have a look at G's and how the car responds to the driver. The specialty of about the Project One cell we see here is we got like torque force feedback, torque machine, the full braking system from pedal to brake pads. Today we got Maro Engel coming round. He won the 24 hours race at the Nürburgring uh, in 2016, so he knows his way exactly around the Nürburgring. With a race driver, you got really reproductive driving, so you can constantly go into the same direction and same spots and analyze changes pretty exactly. They are used to drive these kind of performances, so they give you direct feedback and precise feedback. The beschleunigung is natürlich schon mega. Sitting in the car feels amazing. I mean, it's uh, it's such an amazing project, and when you pull away um, in the simulator, you feel straight away. You know, the, the huge power, um, very high precision. Uh, the car is really all about performance, and you can feel that, and it's uh, it puts a smile on your face. Okay, you you've seen a little bit of the application there. When you're developing high performance cars, the Nürburgring is the holy grail. So you are uh, optimizing uh, the performance with respect to lap time. And uh, I think AMG was quite uh, efficient in this uh, when they finally uh, put uh, the real car on the uh, Nordschleife, uh, they uh, broke the existing record for uh, lap times. And, uh, but let's have a look on this, uh, what's behind the scene going on. I think uh, Michael was addressing this a little bit in his uh, introduction. So what we have seen there on the uh, driving simulator is a vehicle dynamics model, uh, which is uh, done with VI car real time. It also includes a, a software model of the powertrain, and software of uh, the, de the damper model. But then, since uh, this webinar is about hardware in the loop or X in the loop, it also contains multiple hardware components. For them, on the driving simulator to get the right driving fee feeling, driving and braking feeling, they felt they need to model the brake system in hardware and they were using the available ECUs for chassis control, powertrain control. And then they connected this, uh, for example, with elements uh, from, uh, from Vector and Bosch to the Autohawk in order to uh, run the simulation and uh, allow uh, test drivers like Mario Engel to test the virtual car uh, before it is later realized uh, in uh, in hardware. So that's uh, the, the first example I wanted to share with you. And before we go on, also let's re review a little bit how AMG is reusing model. 
because this was one thing we wanted to uh, present that you can reuse uh, models for different applications. So their VI car real time model is used like shown for the driving simulator. But then they give the same model also to their engineers who can develop controls function. And then in the context of continuous integration, continuous testing, they use uh, the model on their uh, software in the loop cluster. And again, they change the they share the same vehicle dynamics model than also with the colleagues who run the powertrain testnet. What's our experience with these models is, you know, if you use a model with a human in the loop, the test is particular professional test drivers. They can uh, serve to you as a kind of quality quality assurance. They will immediately find if something is wrong in the model. So in other words, the experience which our customer shares with uh, are sharing with us is that models used on a, on a simulator uh, have a high degree of accuracy and you uh, can use them then also uh, with other, for other applications. Okay, so we talked about a vehicle dynamics case uh, application for hardware in the loop. This is um, a case study from a European OEM who have been running their hill test lab uh, for, yeah, for quite a long time. And so historically what you do there, you use a reduced order vehicle model uh, for describing your vehicle dynamics. But over the time they realized, okay, they, they may have applications where the reduced order model doesn't give them the details uh, they're looking for for certain types of tests. So they needed to have more detailed uh, multi-body models. And initially they were trying to in their case, it was Simpac to run Simpac on a different Windows machine and uh, connect it to the hill test labs. But they really were struggling to get to hard real time with, with their old hardware. And then they came across uh, the, what we call the VI certified platform. They saw that Simpac is certified, or we certify that Simpac real time runs uh, on our hardware. And uh, and they at the end selected Autohawk because it is able to run a detailed multi-body models. And just to give you a feeling what's possible today, we set up a benchmark where we use the 32 core machine. And uh, we used a, a Simpac model with over 300 degrees of freedom. And these 300 degrees of uh, freedoms were simulated predictably always with loops around 600 microseconds. And we were only using eight cores. So 300 degrees of freedom, uh, 600 microseconds on eight cores. You may ask, okay, what do I do with the with the remaining course? Okay, there's it's still if you, for example, like shown here on the picture, want to use uh, more detailed tire models. Okay, you have uh, every corner one one additional core. Then you would be at 12 cores, and then you may want to add some more detailed simulink models to this and. Uh, you can use uh, then uh, uh, an hardware like Autohawk. And again, 300 degrees of freedom. There will be people who want to do more flex bodies and so on, then the number of degrees of freedom goes up. The good message to you is, okay, you don't have to worry. Uh, we have hardware which also can uh, cope with 
uh, more complicated, uh, detailed uh, multi-body models or any other uh, subsystem models. Let me talk about Sibylle. So you may ask what Sibylle is. Uh, I had the same question when I attended our uh, Zero Prototype Summit last year. Uh, this was a presentation from uh, two Italian companies, Ad4 and uh, Danisi. And uh, they were dealing with the fact that uh, they had simulators, for example, a driving simulator and uh, a steering uh, simulator at different locations. And you all know if you want to connect these, okay, you're dealing with latency. And uh, yeah, that's, this can be troublesome. So if you have systems with high dynamics, so uh, you can, the, for example, if you sit on a driving simulator and you have a delay there, a latency, it doesn't feel right. And uh, this is what, I'm even not sure whether it's called pronounced Sibylle, but uh, I'm German, so I can, I can say it's Sibylle. Sibylle takes care of this. What it basically is, it is a predictor or corrector, depending on, on your point of view, which basically compensates uh, the, uh, the latency or the delay effect. It's based on machine learning and uh, yeah, it works, at least uh, from the things we looked at. So here's just uh, an example. Uh, it's a uh, wheel speed over time uh, where you have this peak here. Red is uh, the real signal. Blue was the uncorrected signal. So the delay effect I had been talking about. And then if you put the corrector in place, then you see you're getting very close to the real signal. So our message or the message from Danisi in Ad4 is, okay, if you have to connect hardware in the loop test benches, which are uh, further location is not at the same place, uh, there is a way how to correct this. And uh, they did this one test, okay, Udine, that's where our headquarter is, Turin, uh, where Denise has an office, okay, and then they were basically correcting the communication results so that uh, the uh, and dynamics were in sync. And uh, let me play a short video uh, which illustrates this. Okay, if you're interested in more uh, details, uh, just uh, go to uh, our Yahoo channel uh, or basically Google ZPS 2022. There you will uh, see all the presentations which were given uh, in Udine uh, in the previous year. 
The final example I want to share with you, this was presented this year. So that's a picture from the uh, our summit, which just happened a couple of weeks ago, uh, where the Politecnico of Milano was uh, presenting this interesting uh, project. So what's this project about? They call it the 1000 MAD project. So Millimilia Autonomous Driving uh, Project. And so this is the first slide of the presentation from Professor Savarese. Again, uh, go to our, or I think this will be uploaded soon, uh, and you can listen to uh, to the presentation from Savarese. What this is about is, okay, I think you know the millimillium. So uh, usually it is uh, driven by historic cars, but uh, here they also want to illustrate what's possible with autonomous driving. For this year, they won't drive the one, uh, the, the 1,000 uh, miles or kilometers, but uh, they are going to drive autonomous more than 200 kilometers with city crossings uh, like, like you see here, and then a little bit, yeah, you can say more boring driving on, on highway. So I feel very interesting project. And uh, if you open up the door here and you look behind the seat, you will see uh, there is an outer hawk controlling the autonomous vehicle. And besides doing the normal stuff for an autonomous vehicle where you do need to do uh, uh, image processing and these kind of things, having a powerful computer on board gives you also a new possibility to explore new technologies, new approaches. So with a computer like Autohawk, you can now realize a digital twin on board where you, you have your real, uh, in the physical world, you have your real, real vehicle, you can measure the outputs, you can run a car real-time model in real time and, and do an estimator. And you also can do model predictive control or something like this, uh, where you also use uh, the digital twin of your vehicle and uh, realize uh, these kind of uh, systems. So we feel it's an interesting uh, area and uh, if you want to know more, the Millimedia is uh, starting later this month, and uh, then uh, I'm sure uh, the uh, students and professors from uh, the Politecnico de Milano, they will communicate more on the, the progress uh, they're, they're making. That's what we wanted to share with you. So hopefully you got a little bit glimpse on the direction uh, we are going and uh, what we are uh, offering to you. So basically, where we want to offer you a complete environment where you can go from offline simulations to virtual sign-off uh, on simulators. You can do a continuous integration of your continuous integration and testing of your control uh, systems. You can handle the demand for more complex use cases with respect to high performance. Our system is open and extendable. And uh, yeah, Alessandro and I were ready for your questions. Thanks for listening.